Hey everyone, welcome to another Everything Google G Suite video with Z. In today's video, we're looking at Google Drive and literally going back to basics with some of the features and facilities that Google Drive has to offer. Uh, there may be things that I've mentioned in this video that you've already that you're already familiar with, or there might be some features in here that you're not familiar with. But sit back and let's get started. So Google Drive is basically one of the core apps uh, within the G Suite range and uh, if you are a G Suite user, Google Drive literally is the foundation of a lot of the stuff that you use with, uh, within the environment and it literally stores all your files and uh, documents and pictures and videos and everything that you may use across various applications from Google Classroom uh, to attachments in the emails uh, to Google Forms and everything to do with G Suite so uh, I thought it might be quite a good idea just to go with some of the features if you're new to using Google Drive just to get your head around how to get to certain things and what to look out for. So I'm just going to launch up my Google Drive folder up here. So again, this is just an account that I use um, just to do some of my demos and stuff. So basically, uh, in the Google Drive environment, there are kind of uh, three main areas of your drive. And these are basically the Priority Drive, which is a new feature, which I'll go over a bit later on, My Drive, and Shared Drives. Now, Shared Drives uh, is not available to everyone. If you are an environment that uses the Google Admin Console, Shared Drive is basically uh, like network shares in a, in a Windows environment but in a Google environment um, so I'll do a, a total separate win, uh, video on that because um, it might take some time to explain some of the features and filters for that so uh, do look out for that one but today's video we're going over my drive and priority so Google Drive basically works as literally a drag and drop environment um, in most cases uh, if you want to upload stuff to your Google Drive it's just a case of picking files up from your desktop or from anywhere uh, in your Windows or tablet environment and you can just drop it into your uh, browser window directly into your Google Drive and I can just quickly show you that in action so I've got a couple of Excel documents and Word documents that I've got in a Windows environment so I can just literally drag that over and drop it off into that environment and you can see the right hand side it tells you that it's been uploaded there's another one uh, and you can see those there there's the Excel one I'll just maximize this window again and you can see the word one there so that's a, that's the simplest form of just drag and dropping files into your Google Drive what you can also do if you've not got files in the desktop environment but they're in the folder somewhere and you just can't kind of bother uh, drag and dropping them what you can do is if you go over to the left hand side and go to new you can upload full folders files uh, and you can literally upload other facilities like PDFs and any other application files you want to be able to upload to so so if you've got folders and files that are embedded into folder structures in a Windows environment, you can navigate to those and pick those out and upload them into your Google Drive environment. So one of the first things that I want to point out to you guys is basically, let me just pull up this uh, down here, is the information pane within Google Drive. Now I find this really, really useful uh, in an environment where if you are sharing stuff with people to be understand, be able to understand what's happening with that file. So on the right hand side, this eye symbol brings up this activity and details pane and basically that tells you uh, a snapshot of everything happening with that particular file or that particular folder. So if people are making changes, if it is a shared folder and a shared file, I'll go over that in a couple of minutes time. Um, this will tell you on the right hand side what is actually happening with that file, who it's been shared with, when it's been created, uh, and literally where it lives. Um, and that's basically uh, quite, quite a great feature to be able to have because if you are moving stuff around or if something's been moved and you're not sure where it's been moved, clicking on the eye symbol on activity will tell you when the last activity was associated to a particular folder uh, and contents of that folder which is really, really useful. So as time goes on, as you start building folders and folders in your, in your My Drive, um, as you can see by default the color tends to be uh, gray for most folders but if you click on any particular folder if you want to chunk folders together by department or by subjects or by uh, zones or anything like that 
If you click on a particular folder and you come over to the three dots on the right hand side here to come more actions, you can actually color coordinate your folders, um, which is great because obviously if you start having loads of folders in there, you can pick and choose a particular color to, to a department. What you can also do is add star um, to any folder and file and basically what that does is if I start that top tips folder there now if I look on the left hand side here and I go to start it then shows me the top tips folder uh, as a start item and you can do this for any file or folder uh, going forward and it just makes it easy to find files that you're using quite regularly easier because as time goes on and you start to use Google Drive the one thing you do realize that you tend to get like sometimes hundreds and thousands of files and folders so it's a good way of identifying important files that you do want to use another feature that I want to show you guys is basically I'll go back to my drive is I'm going to create a, a couple of blank folders um, test one and I'll show you in a second basically what I'm why I'm doing this so if I create another folder in there I call this test two and I'll create another folder in there and I call it test three test three so what you'll find in most places is folder structures where it goes into a folder, into a folder, into a folder, into a folder. So if you find it yourself that you are in that position, the good thing about Google Drive is if you get really uh, deep into folder structure, the actual bar on the left hand side here is actually interactive. So if you've gone three layers into a particular folder, you can jump between those files again without having to press back, back, back and then trying to find that folder structure again sort of thing, So, which is a great feature to have because sometimes in most places, if you are using uh, resources, they may be subject to a department, they may be subject to a, a, a year group, a module, a subject matter. So they do have sometimes five, six, seven, eight, nine folder deeps worth of folder structure. So sometimes when you get to the end of the fact, you know what, I need to go back to a certain folder. You can use this navigation bar at the top to be able to go straight to that particular folder. So the next tip basically is if I go back to my drive, now the searching facility in Google Drive is quite, um, it's, it's really, really good, but sometimes it searches for a hell of a lot of information. So sometimes I find myself is that I'm searching for stuff and it finds stuff that I, I didn't imagine it existed in my shared areas on my drive sort of thing. So sometimes I just want to be able to search a particular folder. And the quickest way I found to be able to do that is if I click on a particular folder here, and if I go over to the three dots again, you got the option to search within everything Google. And that's probably the quickest and easiest way I found in Google Drive to be able to search within folder structures rather than having to search the whole drive. So that's definitely worth keeping an eye out on that. Again, um, in that option as well, you also got the option to download stuff, uh, which is great because if you're, if you're looking to take resources out of Google Drive, that download feature is gonna be a, a lifesaver for you. Now, what you gotta understand is if you download folders and files that have Google uh, Docs, Sheets, uh, and Slides, they will download it as uh, the Microsoft version. Um, so you may lose some compatibility with it if you choose to do that. Most of the times, it, it's fine, but it's worth keeping an eye on that if you are downloading stuff that are previously in, in, a, in a Doc Sheets or Slide format, you may lose some format in that but it's great if you're losing if you're leaving or you want to take some resources with you that's a great feature to have on that you can download that to your windows or mac environment so another thing that i just want to point out is when you upload um microsoft files to google drive um, and to distinguish between what's microsoft and what's google um, the two files i uploaded earlier was an excel file and a word file so what you tend to find is the word files will always have a w the excels will have an x and powerpoint will usually have a p and that usually identifies that those files are actually still microsoft um, up until literally several months back if you uploaded um, any Excel Word or PowerPoint presentations into your Google Drive and you open it in Drive it created Google created a Google version of that file but recently now uh, you can now edit 
Excel, Word and PowerPoint um, files directly as Microsoft files so you don't have to have a Google version of the file if you don't wish to. I find that if I've got existing files that are already in Microsoft or Word or PowerPoint I change them to Google and if they're exactly the same I'll just get rid of the Microsoft and keep the Google version because you can download those back again as Microsoft versions. Anything new that I create, I always create them on Google, but in the existence, I'll just check to see if the compatibility is there. And if it is, I'll get rid of the Microsoft versions. So the next feature I want to show you guys, if I go to the little cog icon at the top there, go to settings, uh, is this convert upload option. So basically what that does is if you upload anything uh, to your Google Drive, that's Microsoft, um, a Microsoft file, it converts it to a Google version. So if you want to use absolutely everything Google, no matter what, without having to keep converting individual files, if you tick that option there, anything you upload to Google Drive will convert it automatically to um, a Google format. So feel free to tick that box if you're happy to use Google all the time. So the next feature I just want to go over quickly with you is something that Google released uh, a couple of months back and that's the, the priority area of your drive. So if you go to priority area in your Google Drive, basically it allows you to cluster all the most regular files that you use literally at a workspace environment so you don't have to go searching for stuff. It's very similar to having the start feature but I think with this one it basically brings it into a single environment. So basically if I go to workspaces and click on create workspace, I call this Z uh, workspace and what that then does is allows me to add most files that I tend to use regularly. So if you're a department or, or a, subject, a subject group or a year or anything like that, if there's particular files that you're using with your colleague, you can put that into that one environment. Uh, and you can have as many of these little workspaces as you need to. Uh, and that's a great feature because obviously as time goes on, the last thing you want to be doing is searching for files that you use regularly and having them listed here is a great way of just being able to navigate to a lot quicker. Even if you add stuff and you delete the workspace, it doesn't actually delete the files, it just, just links to those files. So it's definitely worth having a look at that option. So the next feature I'm going to show you is the shared with me area, uh, but I'm just going to switch over to another account just to get that more clear for you. So in Google Drive, you can basically share absolutely anything uh, in there, whether it be a picture, video, document, file, anything in there is shareable. So based on your organization and what you have set up, if you right click on any particular file and you go to share, and if I click on add advanced, by default it only switch is shared to you or whoever you choose to share so you can add the person in this area here based on their email address and you can give them either edit the file comment on the file or view only and um, based on your structure and what you want the document to be able to what spot papers you want it to serve you can change the various options in there but what i want to bring to your attention is basically uh, who has access to your shared files so again based on your uh, your organization structure uh, how you have your the settings set up there are various options you can choose to share your files right from being shared to be able to share it with uh, the public right down to specific people um, you can also share these files um, to people via a shareable link so anything in Google Drive always has a shareable link it's probably one of the most common features uh, or common ways that people share files it's not the most secure because uh, if someone passes that link on to somebody else they now have that link and they now have access to that file so do take that with a pinch of salt so you can also choose the option to share it specifically within your domain so based on your your requirements definitely choose one of those I always choose um, the bottom option to share it with specific people and then I tend to put in their individual email addresses in this kind of environment and then you can actually specifically send it to those individuals and they're the only ones who have access to it regardless of if they forward the, the file onto anyone and when they do try to access it you will then get a notification to say that such a person is trying to access this file you want to grant them permission so it's always worth having it uh, as private and then being able to share that to individual users 
So once you've shared those files with your colleagues or colleagues have shared those files with you, all those files appear in the shared with me option here. So obviously I don't have anything shared in this particular environment. So if people are sharing files and folders with you, this exactly this is where they exactly appear. Now if you're an organization or your department or, uh, or uh, a teacher or anything like that, if you are sharing files and folders, just be very, very careful because if you start sharing individual files and folders, what tends to happen is as you start to start to use um, Google Drive, this list becomes longer and longer and longer. So I highly recommend if you're an organization to set your folder structure up in a manner in which people can drop files into rather than sharing individual files because it becomes really messy as time goes on which is why i think uh, it's a great feature to use the shared drives uh, in there you can set up departmental year groups or teacher groups or subject group folder structures uh, literally like drives and you can dump stuff into there and anyone who uses them can access those and the good thing about using the shared drives always shared with me is the ownership belongs to the drive rather than individuals so what happens is if someone's sharing a file with you uh, and they leave the organization or they delete the file and you're sharing that file that file also deletes for you so keep that in mind so if there's important files and documents and folders that you're using within a department make sure that they're in the shared drive in your organization rather than having them share between each other because like I said is if they leave and they can't get suspended or deleted those files and folders will go with that account once it goes so be very very careful uh, while you're sharing stuff with people that are no longer going to be around so just one last thing that I do want to point out uh, before we close this video off and basically is at the bottom hand side here you see the storage uh, capacitor of how much you use um, if you're an education environment um, in an education institute you have literally unlimited amount of storage so you have absolutely nothing to worry about in this manner so if you've got resources on the network um, uh, USB drives or flash drives um, get those contents put them on your Google Drive and get rid of those flash media if you're an enterprise user the enterprise user and um, there are various packages and how much storage you can use uh, it's worth checking that out but um, again for educational institutes you are unlimited so do take advantage of that so I hope you like this video uh, if you've got any questions or any comments please leave them in the comment section below um, I'm closing this video off for now I hope you enjoyed it don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video Thank you.